I am Gian, the founding pastor of Victory Church, and from Odessa, Texas, today, our worship service, 307, September 11, 2022. The message today is USA Anti-Terrorism Forces. And I would like to invite you to go to our website, thechurch.us, look uh, for the tab, Bulletins, and download the bulletin with the scriptures and the notes that you will enjoy. If you're watching an A Big TV or if you're using Gian TV on Roku or Apple, grab your phone, point towards the QR code with your camera and download the bulletin of today. We want to thank you for your support, especially to you, my dear George member. You know, guys, that without you, we couldn't do this. It's a teamwork, teamwork. We all do our part in the church. And I thank you for that. Here in the church, we are praying for everybody, but especially those that are sick, those that are unable to attend the, the worship services. So from the bottom of our hearts, we say thank you for your support. Thank you, Tracy, for the songs you are singing. Thank you, Sebastian, for the work you are doing with the broadcast and all the IT work. Thank you to our software experts and musicians. Thank you so much or join us today in this beautiful Sunday morning. Now, I would like to remind you about our apps, Gian TV on Roku and Apple TV. If you have any of those devices, feel free to download the app. Now, today we are going to reflect together about what happened years ago, 9-11, a tragic day for everybody. And we pray for the victims' families. And together, in the presence of God, we are going to reflect about the scripture that will help us to understand what is what we need to do as a nation. Together, we are going to reflect on five aspects. The number one is USA, a nation blessed by God. Second aspect, USA, God's purpose. Third aspect, USA, Advanced nation. Fourth aspect, USA in risk. And finally, we're going to talk about Christianity in USA. So we will start by reading in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verses 2 through 7. And we read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please, Lord, guide us through this reflection. Amen. This is what the scripture says. If you will obey the Lord your God, all these blessings will come to you and be yours. He will bless you in the city and in the field. He will bless you and give you many children. He will bless your land and give you good crops. He will bless your animals and let them have many babies. He will bless you with calves and lambs. He will bless your baskets and pans and fill them with food. He will bless you at all times and everything you do. The Lord will help you defeat your enemies who come to fight against you. Your enemies will come against you one way, but they will run away from you seven different ways. You as a, a nation blessed by God. You are an American, you are an American citizen, you live in the United States of America, you are blessed by God. It's the desire of God, of God, our Lord, to bless the United States of America, and we are blessed in this country. As a nation blessed by God, let's continue reading in Deuteronomy 28, now verses 13 through 14. The Lord will make you be like the head not the tail. You will be on top, not on the bottom. This will happen if you listen to the commands of the Lord your God that I tell you today. You must carefully obey these commands. You must not turn away from any of the teachings that I give you today. It's powerful. The United States of America were founded to sustain the freedom to preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Europeans being 
chased for different organizations for centuries, trying to stop the preaching of the Lord Jesus Christ, trying to stop the freedom that we have in the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that was the origin of this country. Many people don't want to even think about the real reasons why we live in this country. Many people don't want to even remember the origins. And there are many things, historically speaking, many wars, many battles, a lot of blood. But the, the reason why people came from Europe is because it was necessary to restart a place, to restart in a place to preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is what we do here. Do you realize that the story of the U.S. is very similar to the story of Israel? It's a story of battles and wars. We, Christian Americans, are people not afraid to fight. Israel has fought forever. Christian Americans have done the same and will do the same because we are not afraid to fight, to fight Why? Because we are blessed and because we have a purpose according with the scripture. Isaiah 60, 1 through 3, section A. Jerusalem, get up and shine. Your light is coming. The glory of the Lord will shine on you. Darkness now covers the earth and the people are in darkness. But the Lord will shine on you and his glory will appear over you. Then the nations will come to your light. That's the purpose of this country. The purpose for the U.S. is to proclaim the greatness of the Lord God and the grace given to humankind in our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the reason of our existence. We came here for that reason. The U.S. is an advanced nation with advanced technology, advanced education, advanced industry, in advanced commerce, an advanced nation with advanced economy and also advanced government. That makes the U.S. an advanced nation here with the purpose of allowing us believers to continue proclaiming the truth. But unfortunately, the U.S. is in risk. And I want to take you to a couple of passages still in the chapter 28 of Deuteronomy. Verses 15 and 20. So we'll understand what's going on and why the U.S. is in risk. Let's read together. But if you don't listen to what the Lord your God tells you, if you don't obey all his commands and laws that I tell you today, then all many, many bad things will happen to you. If you do evil and turn away from the Lord, He will make bad things happen to you. You will have frustration and trouble in everything you do. He will continue to do this until you are quickly and completely destroyed. He will do this because you turned away from him and left him. Isn't it sad? The U.S. is in risk of losing its leadership and prosperity if we stop preaching the Bible. It is exactly, my friend, Like what happened with Israel. It is exactly like what happens with you. The story of Israel. The story of the U.S. The story of your life. The story of every every believer. They are all interconnected because all. All of us. We have been created by the Lord God. And we are here with a purpose to worship him and to continue proclaiming the greatness of his kingdom, which is eternal. And also to continue proclaiming the greatness of the principles of the Bible. But what happens? Most believers begin walking the right path. Most believers want to get us right. They say, I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to walk the right 
walk. I'm going to do what is right. And most believers start to experience the prosperity and blessings that Deuteronomy chapter 28 explains. Because they are promises for a believer. Like the same thing happened to Israel. Israel as a country, Israel as the beginning of the tribes and Moses and all of that. A group of people that were chosen by God to shine. Like he says to the Israelites here in Isaiah that we just read. Shine, get up Jerusalem, shine. Because the Lord God wants to bless his people. The Lord God wants to bless you. The Lord God wants to continue blessing not just the U.S., but every single country that wants to proclaim the same principles to every single nation that is willing to take the Bible and lift it up and yell to the four winds that we believe in the Lord God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, that he is the one who blesses us all. Every nation, the U.S., every family in the world, you, every believer, is entitled to receive the promises of prosperity and leadership. But those promises are conditioned. And that is the problem that we have today. Because people are expecting the blessings and leadership and all kind of prosperity. They want to be, continue being the target of those blessings, right? The, re, the ones receiving the blessings. You want to be this recipient, this person being blessed by God with prosperity, leadership, protection. Of course, everyone wants to have that. But those promises, my friend, are conditioned. Are conditioned to your loyalty to God. And they are conditioned to your obedience to those commandments. They are conditioned to your loyalty to God and your willingness to do what is right. Unfortunately, people, you probably, Many individuals, at this point in time, they just don't want to continue trusting in God. They don't want to know anything about the Bible. So let me ask you this. What do you think is going to happen to someone who was one day a believer and rejects the scripture and now doesn't want to even read the Bible at all? And actually disagrees now with the Bible. What do you think is going to happen to a believer that suddenly is not a believer anymore? We just read it. The Lord is not going to put up with that. The Lord God is not going to say, oh, sure, you are entitled to my blessings and prosperity and leadership. No matter what, it's not that way. If that happens to a believer, what do you think is going to happen to a family? What do you think happens with families that they initially were believers and they, they were sustained by faith in Jesus and they were part of the church? Do you really believe that those families are going to make it through life? What do you think is going to happen one day? The same things that will happen to not just the person and not just the tribe, but also to a country. When countries and families and people stop worshiping God and they don't want to obey the commandments anymore. And they just give their back to God. They are in that moment determining the future. And that is the problem. Because everyone wants prosperity. Everyone wants leadership. You want protection. But it's not going to happen 
the real prosperity, the real protection, the spiritual blessing from God is not going to come to anyone unless this person is right with God. And the sad part of this is that disobeying God is so easy. That is why people disobey. It's because it's easy. It's way, way much easier to disobey God than to obey God. It's easier to do what is wrong than to do what is right. But disobeying the Bible is disobedience to God. Nothing good will come as a result of that. Nothing. And then there are consequences. As a person, individuals as individuals, when they see the consequences of their behavior, when they see the consequences of giving their backs to God, they need to make a decision. And they say, wait a minute, I think we need to change here. I, I think I got to stop doing what is wrong and start doing what is right. And when that happens, there is a turn, right? They start to, to pray. They start to think, I want to get it right. I want to do what is the right thing. And that moves the Lord, touches the heart of the Lord, because the Lord loves when people repent. The Lord loves that. And he is not going to give his back to anyone who says one day, you know what? I don't want to continue doing this. I'm going to get it right. Unfortunately, sometimes individuals, they need to see terrible consequences in their lives in order to stop doing what is wrong and changing. And the question that we always ask is, why did you wait? Why, why did you do that? You saw it coming. You knew that this, was, this will be the outcome of your disobedience. And what do they say? Yes, I did. So why did you do it then? I don't know. I thought that maybe, I don't know. I wasn't thinking. You were not thinking. Let me tell you, the same thing that happens to an individual happens to a family. It happens to a company. It happens to businesses and it happens to cities, and it happens to a country. Disobeying the Bible is disobedience to God. How can people believe that the blessings of God will continue coming to the U.S. when the people are disobeying God, defiantly rejecting the Bible, mocking the church? Nothing good will come as a result of that. Nothing good will come. Of course not. But they persist. Rather, we see more and more immorality in our cities and in our societies and in our communities. You know that immorality is the cancer that has destroyed all great nations. In fact, the destruction of the life of many individuals is precisely their immorality. They don't want to do things right. And it's just a matter of time. Matter of time. Eventually, because they live immoral lives. What about the U.S.? What about our countries? What about our cities? What about our states? How can we expect the protection of God, the leadership that he promises us? How can we expect continuous, continued prosperity when we are giving our backs to the good Lord, when we are defiantly disobeying the Bible? My friend, without God in your home, your family will become immoral. There is no way. That families will be sustained without God, without the principles of the scripture. And you see it all the time. 
You see how the prosperity comes and goes. The, the, the leadership comes to people and then goes. What's going on? What is the reason why suddenly someone that was prosperous and it was an influencer is being rejected and nobody wants to have anything to do with him? Why is it? Immorality. Immorality. But without God in your home, your family will become immoral, my friend. Without God in our country, our country will become immoral. And then we wonder, what's going on? Why is it that we have so many attacks? Well, it's the same thing that happens to a person, the same thing that happens to a family, the same thing that happens to a company. God will not bless individuals, families, companies, or countries that are being immoral. The Lord will not bless anything like that. It's the opposite. Destruction and calamity. Consequences. But we see that story repeating again and again and again. We see it constantly in individuals and families. The good news that I have for you today is the same scripture gives us solution to these problems. Today we are pointing out realities of our country. But I want us to study this particular scripture in 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verses 13 through 15. And this is what can save the U.S. Christianity. And this is what can save your family. And this is what can save any society, any community, in fact, any country. Christianity. Listen to what this passage says. Words from the Lord. When I close the sky so that there is no rain, you understand? No more prosperity. Or command the locusts to destroy the land. <laughs> or send sicknesses to my people. Because it's the Lord. The Lord is the Supreme authority in the universe. Of course, it is the supreme authority in the country, in the city, in the state, in the family, in your life. When I close the sky, says the Lord, so there is no rain, or command the locusts to destroy the land, or send sicknesses to my people. And here is the good news, my friend. If my people who are called by my name become humble and pray, and look for me. And turn away from their evil ways. Then I will hear them from heaven. I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes are open. And my ears will pay attention to the prayers prayed in this place. So there is hope, my friend. There is hope for everybody. When we are willing to humble ourselves. There is hope for you and for your family. There is hope for the whole country. There is hope for believers. Certainly we have messed up big time. As a country. As families. <laughs> there is no one else to blame. We got to accept that. We citizens. We the Family members, we, those workers from those companies, we are the reason of this destruction because we disobeyed God. But he says, if my people, if my people humble themselves and they pray to me, the Lord says, praying, prayers of the people that are in trouble. <laughs> you see that? 
Of course, we, the ones that are leading the country in the right direction, we will continue praying. But mainly are those that are in trouble. You, my friend, if you are in trouble, if you are afraid, if you are in huge need of a miracle, whether it's financial miracle or health miracle, if my people humble themselves and pray and look for me, And change their ways. Because that is the point, right? There has to be a change. But as long as people just keep playing this game that for, at this point, we are about several decades of this immorality, just keep on going. It's time for us to stop it. And if you, if you are a Christian, American Christian, It's your time to pray for the country, to stop these attacks, to to stop terrorism. And you can do it when you humble yourself and you pray and you look for God and you change your ways. Then is when the Lord will bring the healing that we need, the restoration we need. But Us believers in the U.S., we need to defend our freedom to proclaim the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you really want to protect the country? (laughs) Protect your freedom to proclaim the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody says to you, you cannot teach me about God and Jesus. Protect that freedom, my friend. That's how you defend your country. Protect the freedom to preach the gospel. And when it's about worshiping God, worship God with passion. Don't be afraid. Don't be timid. Worship God with passion. Defend the Bible. Defend your right to read the Bible. Defend your right to say your prayers. Don't be ashamed that people mock you because you are saying your prayers in places. It's a freedom that we have here in the U.S. Defend that. And of course, we need to prepare the next generation to fight for those two freedoms. We need to prepare the children and the youth. We need to prepare the young adults by telling them to let them know that these freedoms are vital for liberty, for leadership, for prosperity, and for advancement. Because there is not going to be any prosperity without God. There is no advancement without God. There is no leadership without God. There is none. All those are the result of the blessings of God coming upon his people. Do you want to defend this country? Proclaim the good news of Jesus. Do not stop preaching the gospel yourself. Do not stop praying yourself. Do not be ashamed because you are a believer. You know, those people that are evildoers, what are you going to do about it? It's what they choose to do, but you have the opportunity to do something about it. And what is what you are doing? You just give up and you say, yeah, you know, yeah, I'm going to leave it, but I don't want problems with anybody. No, my friend. <laughs> no. You have to be strong in the Lord. You have to continue preaching the gospel. You have to continue lifting up the name of Jesus. You need to continue talking about the Bible, showing your Bible, declaring your Bible, living your Bible. Because that is the way to prepare the next generation. You know, your children, your grandchildren, the young people, they need to see examples of strong Christians today. 
in your family, you are that light. You are that lamp. You have to shine for them. Show them the path. Do you know that our next generation must be ready to fight with everything to defend the church in our great country, the U.S.? The next generation must be ready to fight with everything. But to begin with, defending the church. We do it. But our next generation must be ready to fight for the church. If the next generation fails defending the church, there is not going to be a great USA. The next generation has to be strong to defend the church, to defend the freedom we have to preach the gospel. Because that is what will bring the support from God to us Americans that we can continue moving forward in our history and become that light that shines to other countries. The next generation loving God, trusting in the name of the Lord Jesus, proclaiming the greatness of Jesus, defending the church. The next generation ready to defend the Bible, ready to defend the church. The next generation will be ready to defend our great country, the USA. But there is a need for a change. There is a need. And all this has to start somewhere. Somebody has to start it. You need to start it, my friend. You need to start by realizing doing wrong is not going to take you anywhere. It's just destruction and destruction and destruction. Disobedience to God is just a wrong choice. On the contrary, obedience to God is the solution for your life. Obedience to God is the solution to this country. Obedience to God is the solution to get out of poverty and scarcity and all kind of difficulties in life. Obedience to God. Obedience to the Bible. Faith in the name of Jesus. And there is only one way to do it is by surrendering to Him. It's the only way. You surrender to God. You humble before the Lord. And you say, Lord, I admit it. This is wrong. I must change. What are you waiting? Do you want to see another terrorist attack to show you that we are messed up? Or do you need to see in your life another disaster to realize that it's time for you to change? To give your whole heart to God? I don't think so. It doesn't matter where you are, my friend. It doesn't matter your nationality. It doesn't matter the name of your country. In every place on the face of the earth, these truths are real. Humility before God. Changing, stopping immorality. We need to stop immoral things in our lives and becoming good people, decent people, honest people. But you cannot do it on your own. You need God's help. That is what the Holy Spirit does in your life. Like right now, that you are longing for an opportunity to change, to be different. And you say, I would like to do it, but I, I really don't know where to start. Well, there is the Holy Spirit next to you, upon you, helping you to do this. The Holy Spirit comes upon you and moves you 
and shows you that it's true, that it's a time for a change, that there is no more need to waste your time. It's time for a change, to give your whole heart to him, to him and begin a new walk. That is the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. And he will guide you to the next steps. And you know what is what else is going to happen to you? You surrender to God. You surrender. You allow the Holy Spirit to guide you. You will start experience restoration in your life. How things become to be, to be better for you. Your, your relationships, opportunities will come up to you to do other things. And he promises... I will heal my people, he says. Because the Lord wants to heal his people. And you got to understand this. It's God's desire to heal his people. It's not his desire to see his people struggling, sick, troubled. It's not his desire. His desire is to see you prosperous. His desire is that you will be healed and also that you will become a leader to have prosperity, that you will shine for his glory. That is God's desire. And in order to bring healing, do you know what the Lord has done? He brought the Lord Jesus. He sent the Lord Jesus for you. The prophet Isaiah tells us about that. There is a scripture that I want to share with you now. Chapter 53, verse 5, it says, Jesus was being punished for what we did. He was crushed because of our guilt. He took the punishment that we deserved. And this brought us peace. You were healed because of his pain. My friend, by faith, the healing can come to you in your body, in your relationships, in your finances, in your whole community can, can be a, a miracle that you will be amazed. The Lord can do everything because He is God. All that you need to do is trust in Him. Trust in Him. You don't need to do, any, to do anything else other than trusting Him. The Lord, the Holy Spirit, will help you to continue believing. And there is a beautiful passage. I, I put it here on the screen for you. John 3.16. God loved the world so much that he gave his only son so that every one who believes in him will not be lost but have eternal life. That's the way to go, my friend. Just open your heart and tell him, Lord, I'm done with my old ways. And if you were a believer and you went away and then now you are coming back, good for you. Restoration is coming to you, my friend. I'm so glad that you are here with me today. This is the service 307 on September 11, 2022. And the topic is USA anti-terrorism forces. The spiritual forces of God working to restore this, this nation. And I'm glad that you are here. Go to our website. You will find more materials if you are interested. Share this message with somebody else. But next Sunday, in the worship service 308, September 11, I will be telling you how to prepare our next generation. How beautiful is that the same scripture tells us what are the steps and what is what we need to do to prepare our children and grandchildren to fight the right battles, the spiritual battles in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for being here with me. See you next week. Baby, let's see if you can do this. Yes, search app, G on TV. You got this, honey? It's on, that's right. Man, you're a genius. Old people get so happy with something so simple. By Giancarlo Vicitoro.
I know you have suffered, but what if you would have never met your mom because she died giving birth to you? That's the beginning of Simon's story. Then Simon's father died when he was only 15 years old. He was sent to a foster home where he was bullied, humiliated, and there was no one to protect him. But Simon decided to find a way to get his revenge by studying and becoming good at sports. He won a scholarship, and soon he started his own business, Simon Yardwerf. Mean people were envious of his success, but one day, Simon met and fell in love with Jackie. They were happy until the FBI arrested Simon due to clues that incriminated him with several murdered people. Will Simon end up in prison? Don't miss the outcome of this story, The Best Revenge, the musical that will inspire everyone to pay good for evil. Go to mygiancarlo.com to purchase The Best Revenge on audio and video. Also you took all of my tears You make me feel loved, you make me feel good I love your words, you changed my world You make me feel loved, you make me feel good I love your words, you changed my world You are So very far away your light Shining at the distance You make me believe that There was hope for me It was your light In the night To give me life It's your light Some days I felt ready to sink Every time you rescued me, my own tears became the ink to write the prayers of my me.
Acting right was not my style. No more sad days. Now all is bright. The sun is shining with its light. I feel the wind blowing off my skin. I feel your love coming. You're my spring. The winter is over, no more snow. My heart you filled with your love. Now in my home I hear the birds. I see the kids playing, boys and girls. Like the ocean wants the moon, like the grass needs the rain. Come and take my pain away. How can somebody fix my heart? My life is falling apart. If only there was somebody who sees that I'm not nobody. How can somebody fix my heart? My life is falling apart. If only there was somebody who sees that I'm not nobody. Sing to me a love song again. Fly me on your airplane. It is absolutely amazing what I am feeling. Never before I experienced what you have done to me. I know that in the past I didn't see things as I do now. But honestly, you have changed everything for me. And uh, I don't want to let it go. I don't want you to go anywhere. Stay here with me, by me, because you make me feel alive. And I know that you love me, and I love you. I love you with all of my heart. I belong to you. You brought me a new life, a life that is absolutely profound, real, and true. I feel alive. You make me fly. I'm in the clouds. You make me alive. This is my night. I'm gonna fight. I feel the wind. I'm gonna win. I feel alive. You make me fly. I'm in the clouds. Hey, 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 that's all, that's all, that's all, folks. <laughs> Time to go home. <laughs> Ciao.